Hi everyone, hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to be carrying on with this spaniel tutorial. So in part one we did the eyes and started the fur around the eyes. So I'm basically just going to be carrying on from where we left off. Um, I will leave the link to part one in the video description below so if you want to go and watch that one first then you can do. I've also left the reference photo and the full materials list including all the colours that I'm going to be using so you can follow along all the way through. So just in case you missed it in part one, I'm working on an A4 size and I'm working on extra white hot press Fabriano Artistico paper and I'm going to be using a mixture of Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. So I've already got bits of the outline that I can still see which I'm going to use as a guide and I'm basically just going to carry on with this sort of gingery fur um, around each of the eyes and try and do like the top half of the face. So what I like to do is firstly add a base layer now when it comes to choosing you know what colour to use as a base layer I always like to kind of pick out the palest colour that I can see in the fur which is usually like a creamy sort of pale yellow colour if you're drawing ginger fur. So I've picked out the brown okra 10% and I'm just going to go along some of these initial outlines. You want to shade in the same direction as the fur just so we can visualise sort of everything together. I'm kind of shading in those lightest parts to begin with. You want to kind of shade up to those initial outlines and flick sort of inward slightly towards that lighter bit of the fur, which is almost white. I'm also using the bluntest part of the tip. Once you've started shading with like a sharp pencil for, you know, a few a few minutes or so, it will um, start to wear down on one side and that's the side that you want to keep on using because it'll give you a much kind of softer line to shade with. So it'll give you a much more even coverage, which is what we want at this first initial stage. So I am just lightly sort of filling in those shadowy areas as well, just so we've got a base for the whole like entirety of the ginger fur. I'm going to do the same to the right hand side so you want to kind of flick up slightly sideways into this sort of lighter section of the fur. When the fur's got kind of two different colours going on um, or like a pattern for example like if, if you were drawing like a dalmatian or um, a cat that's got like stripy fur you always want to make sure you're kind of merging them together by kind of continuing on some of your lines so they look like they're part of the same sort of coat of fur, they're not two separate things. I think that's the hardest thing to do when it comes to drawing like fur that's two different colours or more. Um, just getting it to kind of all sort of merge together.
So this white bit of fur down the center of the face and going up towards the top of the sort of forehead. You just wanna leave that as it is for now. We're just literally gonna focus on that ginger fur to start with. So once you've filled that space with the brown ochre 10%, you then want to move on to a slightly darker color. So I'm gonna go in with the brown ochre luminance pencil. This is like a lovely sort of gingery rich orange color. So perfect for what we're trying to achieve. And you want to use this to start mapping out where those shadows are. And you'll be able to start to kind of visualize where those subtle folds are in the, in the skin or in the fur as well, sort of around and above the eye. Again, I'm keeping my pressure quite light for now and I'm using the bluntest part of the tip to give me an even coverage. So where we started doing that fur just above the eye in part one, um, this is where you can kind of judge how dark you can go with the colour that you're currently working with. So you definitely want it to be darker than what we drew in part one. So with that, you can apply a slightly harder pressure just so when you compare the two sections, this is obviously a lot darker. I think it's always better to initially go in with a light pressure and be quite sort of loose and sketchy. Um, so you can kind of visualize where everything is and then start to darken everything. So I'm probably now using a bit of a medium pressure to start building up that kind of darker contrast between this and this area. But again, I'm just kind of loosely mapping out where those shadows are before I do start going in with that slightly harder pressure. This is also where your pencil will pick up that grainy texture from the paper underneath. Um, this is what a lot of artists like to try and avoid, but when it comes to coloured pencils, there's not really any way of avoiding it. Um, I suppose it does depend on what paper that you're working on as well, because I know a lot of papers are much smoother or much more rough than the Fabriano. The Fabriano is kind of a nice kind of in-between. Um, and it does hold a lot of layers because it's got a really fine tooth to it, but especially at this initial stage, sort of two or three layers in, it will pick up the sort of grain from underneath, but I suppose that's a good thing. And I know it kind of looks a bit grainy and a bit kind of ugly at that stage because we want the, the fur to appear as smooth as we can and look really soft. Um, but it's just, it's a good thing really, because it's showing that we can apply a lot more layers and include some of those subtle colours in there and it'll hold on to it. It'll really sort of grip onto that pigment and um, it's kind of a good paper to use. This is my, definitely my favourite paper to use for coloured pencils. It's what I use for all my commissions, my tutorials and probably most of my wildlife pieces, although I do like sometimes working on drafting film. You want to pay attention to these really subtle sort of changes in direction in the fur as well. And again, look at where it kind of meets that white fur, flick up into that area. And then this white fur below the eye, where we've got some of these little tufts kind of flicking up towards the eye. With your brown ochre, you kind of want to flick downwards, leaving gaps in between to create these little sort of lighter tufts that look like they're flicking upwards, if that makes sense.
I'm using these initial outlines as a guide for where these sort of darker shadowy areas are and what direction they're going in. You can also keep comparing, you know, different sections of your drawing to the reference photo, kind of judging if you've got the right amount of sort of light first showing or whether you need to add a little bit more shadow and stuff like that. Just keep comparing different sections. I'm just going to shade up to the start of the ear. Um, I am going to do the left ear, I think, in part three, or maybe part four. Maybe we'll finish the rest of the um, face in part three. I'll tackle the nose and the, the sort of snout area, and then in part four, we can make a start on the ears. A lot of people don't like drawing spaniel ears, and I think the they almost like come across more complicated than they actually are um, it's very similar to everything that we've done so far similar process in terms of just breaking it down into shapes i suppose there's just a lot more sort of different directions and different tufts and like overlapping bits going on so it does get a bit complex in terms of sort of mapping out where everything is but once you've done that it's you know kind of the same process for how i approach everything really So this shadow just underneath the eye before it starts sort of merging into the snout area, it's quite dark. So I'm just filling in that space so I know that it's quite a dark shadow. So it's starting to come together. We've only added sort of two colours, um, but you can already sort of visualise where those folds are in the skin and we've got a good idea of where those light and dark areas are so we can start to build on them. So I'm actually going to add another layer to those lightest parts in the fur and I'm going to go in with the shade Butternut, which is slightly darker than that brown ochre 10% that we used as the base layer. I'm just going to work into those lightest parts, just kind of merging the edges with that surrounding shadow. I think at the minute it does look quite grainy, but in general I'd say luminance pencils are brilliant for base layers and for blending. I think once you've added, you know, a significant amount of layers, they do just sort of smudge together and blend together really easily. It's just a case of sort of building them up initially. So again, just kind of flick up into that white fur, releasing your pressure right at the end of your line so it just kind of merges together nicely and fades off into that white fur. I 
I'm also going to add a little bit of the Warm Earth 5%, which is um, kind of like a warm pinky tone. And if you look at ginger fur in general, there is usually quite a lot of sort of pink colours in there. So just as a bit of a mid-tone, kind of at the base of all these sort of um, folds in the skin, the base of these kind of lighter parts, I'm just going to work a little bit of this into those areas. Just to add a subtle bit of pink in the fur. So it's at this point where we've kind of mapped out those shadows, those lightest parts and added those first few initial base layers that I want to start adding in a bit of like a vibrant undertone. So to do that, I'm going to go in with the shade Brown, which is actually a Caran d'Ache Pablo pencil. I think I used this briefly to start that fur around the eyes in part one. Um, but basically, I don't always use Pablo pencils. They're kind of like an in-between sort of pencil between the polychromos and the luminance. That's how it feels to work with it. Um, kind of not as soft as the luminance, but not as hard as the polychromos. But there are a few colours that are really, really good. And the brown is one of them, especially for ginger fur. It's like a really vibrant sort of rich burnt orangey red colour. So perfect as like a bright undertone. The idea of adding like a, a bright colour sort of at this stage is that when we keep adding layers and building up that tonal value a little bit more, we're going to have this sort of bright colour that's kind of showing through from underneath. So it's kind of going to tint everything a little bit that we add on top and keep everything really sort of rich and gingery. So I'm just adding this in those shadowy areas and sort of fading it off as I approach the lightest parts of the fur. And I am keeping my pressure fairly light because it is a very sort of pigmented colour. So you don't want to add too much but you definitely want it to kind of show up
So to keep building up that tonal value and start increasing the contrast a little bit more, we want to start darkening those shadows. So to do that, I'm going to go in with the Walnut Brown Polychroma, which is a lovely kind of chocolatey dark brown. So perfect for those shadowy areas. And I'm applying like a medium pressure, but you want to keep everything really controlled. So you can see how I'm subtly sort of changing direction, depending on which bit I'm shading in the fur. So you want to release your pressure at the end of each pencil stroke, um, especially the ones that you're kind of pointing up towards those lightest parts in the fur, just so it kind of gradually progresses into that lighter colour. Thank you. 
you'll also notice that we're kind of reducing that grainy texture from the paper as well. We're kind of pushing the pigment into those little grooves in the paper so it's starting to squash down the tooth. And as a result, our fur is starting to look a little bit more smooth, which is what we want. Let's fill in this shadow at the bottom as well. Kind of outlining the side of the ear where it meets the face. And then you want to shade towards the rest of the fur from that line. Kind of hardest pressure on the line, release your pressure as you approach the fur. So I initially went in with quite a sharp pencil, but I've not once sharpened it so far. Just keep kind of twisting round to keep using sort of different edges of the pencil. So I've gone over that line again where the ear meets the side of the face and then you just want to deepen that shadow again just going over the same area just to increase that contrast a little bit more. applying quite a hard pressure now, kind of squashing down the teeth of the paper and really darkening that area just underneath the ear. So 
So your hands should probably be aching at this point, um, you know, really working that pigment into the paper. So it should look something like that. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to continue on, just adding a little bit into the rest of these like more subtle shadows in the fur. And just to darken them slightly. So to help these shadows and lighter parts of the fur look like they're all kind of merging together, I like to do some elongated individual hairs like this, kind of coming out of the shadows into those lighter parts. Just so everything's kind of seamlessly merging together. like that. So to work back into those lighter parts of the fur again, I'm going to go in with the raw sienna, which is like a vibrant golden colour. I'm keeping my pressure fairly light because this is quite a vibrant colour so I don't want it to be too overpowering but I also want to include some of those like yellowy golden tones in the fur as well. So like we used the Warm Earth 5% before to create some of those pinky tones within the lighter parts of the fur, I'm going to go in now with the Warm Earth 40% which is, um, well obviously a lot darker. When it comes to the percentages of the luminance pencils it literally just means how saturated that colour is. Um, so with the Warm Earth 40% I'm just going to add a little bit of that pinky tone to the light areas in the fur. And it's not overly pinky, you can see it's just working to kind of blend what we've got so far together. Make it look kind of less yellow and a little bit warmer, but still have elements of those golden tones underneath. I'm 
I'm applying quite a hard pressure um, and you'll find that those pigments underneath just literally smudge together and we're really starting to smooth everything out now to create that really kind of silky smooth coat to the dog's fur. Another colour that's going to be really good just for bringing everything together a little bit more is the shade B Stray, which is a polychromo. Again, I'm just going to work into those lightest parts in the fur. It's kind of like a nice light brown, like a goldeny colour. So I'm going to go in now with the Burnt Umber Polychromo to keep darkening these shadows. I suppose it's quite similar to that Walnut Brown that we used earlier. So I'm going to start off down here at the bottom left, kind of filling in this shadow a little bit more. I'm 
You'll notice as well, I've not really focused too much on the details at this point. I've just literally been um, continuously doing back and forth motions. And just by doing that and keep building up the tonal value, sort of layer by layer, you're already creating that kind of fur-like texture. Um, so I think it's so important to really focus on the tonal values first before going in with your details. I think a lot of artists want to sort of go for the details straight away but the problem with that is it can end up looking quite flat because you've not really got anything underneath it to to give it that kind of body if you will so you can see now it's really really smooth which is exactly what we wanted We're just kind of deepening some of these dark browns in the shadowy areas of the fur. With a hard pressure, kind of squashing down the rest of the tooth of the paper so there's no more of that grainy texture showing through.
you kind of want to leave some lighter little tufts kind of in between your shadowy areas to make it look more realistic. I'm just going to briefly go back in with the B Street just to darken this little bit above the eye. Just to tone it down slightly because I think it's just a little bit too bright. And then I'm going to go in with a really dark colour, which is the dark sepia polychromo. This is like the darkest brown that they do. Um, and I'm going to work into those like darker shadows and start adding in that darker fur detail. So I'm going to start with this one down here on the left hand side of the face. And I'll go along where the ear meets the face line and then work into what we've already got down so far just to make it a little bit darker and increase that contrast even more. I think the more of a contrast you have the more your portrait will have that sense of depth. Now you want to go and darken all of the sort of darkest areas in the fur as well as kind of keep turning your pencil around using the sharper point of the tip just to add in some sort of finer darker lines within the body of fur so that they kind of stand out and create a little bit of that detail. And kind of work into what we've already got so far so kind of follow along some of those lines that you've already created.
So we've created much more of a contrast now and we've sort of built up some of those darker details within the fur as well by making some of those lines stand out. You especially want to keep building up those ones around the eye, you know, really elongate some of them so it looks like it's just merging nicely into that surrounding fur. And you also want to make this little bit in the inner corner quite a lot darker as well. like that. So before we pull out those highlights in the ginger fur, I'm going to go in with the shade Sanguini just to bring out those kind of rich gingery tones again in the lighter parts of the fur. This is like a really nice deep orangey colour. I'm going to start to pull out those highlights and add in those lighter details in the fur um, by using the brown ochre 10% which is actually what we used right at the start of that very first initial base layer. So I'm just going to work into some of the lighter parts of the fur. I'm not going to add too much because I don't want to kind of desaturate those nice colours that we've built up from underneath. I still want to kind of show them coming through from underneath so i'm just adding this in those very very lightest parts that and then I'm actually going to go in with the craft knife slice tool so it's got a ceramic blade on the end with a pointy side and a curved side I always like to use 
the curved side I think it gives you a bit more of a thicker line um, and what you want to do is start to kind of flick some of these hairs continue them along and flick up into the ginger first they definitely look like they're kind of in the foreground they're in front of this part of the ginger fur with these darker hairs that we were flicking up into the white fur you kind of want to do some where you're flicking back down And then with these hairs, you want to flick back up. And then with the rest of the fur, you can just kind of work into what we've already got so far in terms of like lighter little tufts and stuff and just work into them, kind of brighten them up a little bit and it'll just lift off those top layers of pigment. Um, so in a way you're kind of drawing back in those really fine details and I think this is the step that really makes it look you know really realistic I think it's quite hard to achieve this level of detail by just using colour pencils alone it's kind of like an extra little an extra little bit of detail really where you can achieve those really fine lines So just by elongating some of those lines and kind of pulling out those subtle highlights in the fur, it just looks a lot more realistic. That fur looks, you know, really full, really thick and um, obviously really smooth now that we've kind of really squashed down the tooth of the paper. We can't see any of that grainy texture from the paper whatsoever, which is what we wanted. I'm also just going to add some of these like whiskers or sort of wispy hairs that are coming from the eyebrow now when it comes to whiskers and sort of long flyaway hairs that's that are falling over the fur i think it's a lot easier and it looks a lot more natural if you just sort of go with the flow don't try and absolutely perfect it to the exact right proportions to the reference photo because i think your line can end up looking quite wobbly and then it doesn't look as sort of natural um, so what you want to do is start off 
sort of mapping out where that sort of whisker or wispy hair is starting from. And I'm also going to do the one above it as well. There's also a few tiny little sort of flyaway hairs over here. Now, when you're doing stuff like this, this is where I like to use the pointier side of the ceramic blade because you can create a much finer line. There's also sort of a longer whiskery sort of line down here, which I've just drawn in. So you can see that it literally just lifts off those top layers of pigment and you can create those whiskers that kind of really stand out against what you've already drawn. To create that with like a white pencil or something like that would be quite difficult. Um, that's why the ceramic blade is a really good one to have really good tool to have so you want to start where it's originating from i mean it's kind of in a funny angle this one um if it helps you to kind of turn around your paper then you can do but i'm gonna maybe do it in like two separate bits i'm gonna just follow it round and then i know that it kind of finishes sort of over here somewhere so i'm gonna curve then you want to always flick. I think as long as you're quick towards the end of the line, so you're flicking at the end, um, it, that looks the most natural. So I'm going to do the exact same to the sort of wispy hair above. Flick up. And then it sort of finishes over here, so I'm going to curve it back around like that. Now obviously mine's a little bit wider than the reference photo but we can kind of see where it is. So just to kind of brighten that line a little bit more you might just want to go over it to lift off more of that pigment and then once you've mapped out where they are I like to go in with a buff titanium or a white pencil um, because we're working with ginger fur, I think the buff titanium would work quite well because it's a really, really pale yellowy colour. Um, and you just want to work into what you've literally just scraped away just to brighten that line. Flick. And flick down. I'm going to keep these subtle ones as they are because they're quite nice being really fine and subtle. So we're pretty much there with it now. Just to finish off the top of the head, I want to sort of fill in some of this um, white fur, kind of at the top of the head and running down the middle of the face as well. And then in part three, we can focus on the nose and the snout area and finish off the face. So when it comes to white fur on white paper, a lot of people do struggle with it. Um, this reference photo is kind of a good example to show you what I'm gonna do because the white fur is very sort of bright white, almost, well, very much similar to the colour of the paper. Um, I think you can kind of get away with it when you're working from a reference photo where the white fur is slightly cream or there's a lot of shadow going on because you can just really emphasise those shadows to get it to kind of stand out against the paper. But when it's really bright white, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. Um, without it looking flat because we still want it to look realistic obviously. So when it comes to white fur on white paper, these are my three absolute favourite colours to use. I use these all the time anyway for base layers but when it comes to white fur you really want to focus on those sort of pale kind of pastel-y um, colours within the white fur and there's always usually some warmer tones and some cooler tones in there. Um, so I'm going to think I'm going to start with the buff titanium luminance pencil and we can still see some of these initial outlines right at the top of the head. I'm just going to lightly rub some of them out because some of them are slightly too dark like that and very lightly and I mean very lightly like literally just hardly any pressure whatsoever. Just let it brush across the surface. I'm just going to shade up to those initial outlines. And you can kind of work from the edges of that ginger fur as well. I 
and you want to kind of flick upwards to create that sort of wispy effect as well. And then as we progress down towards like in between the eyes, that shadow gets a lot darker. I'm just going to bring it down to about sort of halfway down here and then carry on lightly shading in the entirety of that white section up to the top of the head. So something like that, it's kind of a little bit more creamy compared to the colour of the paper. We've kind of added a really subtle base. You can't really see much because we've kept the pressure quite light. I'm now going to go in with the pink white luminance pencil, which is obviously a really, really pale pink colour. And I think especially around the right hand side of the face, around that gingery fur, especially like in this section here that's sort of flicking out that white little bit of fur is quite pink so you want to emphasize that by using the pink white luminance pencil just work into those hairs and then i'm going to start with maybe like a medium pressure now working down the centre of the face, sort of mapping out where those shadows are. With the silver grey luminance pencil, which is like a pale blue colour, I'm going to work into more of the top of the head, which is like an icy white. And again, you want to apply the same pressure that we did with that buff titanium. So literally just brushing it across the paper, keeping it really, really light handed. And we basically want to be able to see the outline of the top of the head without it being sort of too in your face. You want to keep it really, really subtle. So any tiny little shadowy tufts or anything that you can see in the white fur, you want to really emphasise those. 
I think with white fur, you always want to go a little bit darker than you initially think. Um, I think that's that's my main advice really for white fur. It's very easy to kind of hold back because you're worried about adding too much and making it look muddy or too dark. But there are ways of, you know, bringing that white pigment back or kind of erasing areas to brighten parts of the fur up again. So I wouldn't worry about adding too much. I think you want to kind of add a little bit more than you think. And there's a lot of kind of wispy hairs going on up here. Obviously we're gonna focus more on them when we start to draw in the ears. But just to make a start, just want to do some really loose um, sort of flyaway hairs kind of curving in all sorts of different directions maybe have some overlapping as well and then I'm bringing that shadow down the center of the face I'm going to go back in with that pink white, just add a little bit more to the right hand side. So they're like our base layers and next up we want to go in with the warm grey one polychromo which is a little bit darker than the paper, more of like a beige kind of colour. So this is where you really want to darken some of those shadows. And you can also sort of merge the edges of that ginger fur with the edges of the white fur. We might have to go back in with um, like a dark brown again, just to kind of alter the shape of the edge of the ginger fur, if that makes sense. Um, because it can be it can become quite warped as we keep working into the edge we can kind of bring it back and we want to make sure it's you know definitely got the right shape on it um but with the warm gray one i'm just adding in those shadowy areas if you can even call them that because they're so so pale you also want to use this to you know, add an extra little light pressured layer to the top of the head just to help it stand out a little bit more against the paper. And then on top of that, you want to use the shade darker, which is the warm grey two. So we're kind of always building up those shadows, but very, very gradually. So next up I'm going to go in with the warm grey 3 which is a, again a shade darker and just keep building up these shadows in the white fur.
I'm now going to go in with the French Grey 30% Luminance Pencil. This is a perfect one for building up those sort of shadows within um, white fur because it's quite a neutral colour. It's like a beigey sort of mousy brown tone. So I'm going to use this especially just this little bit at the bottom of this um, sort of strip of white fur in between the eyes, which is the darkest part. I'm now going to go in with the cold grey one, again to the top of the head to keep very very subtly darkening the edge so it's um, so we can see it against the white paper without it being too sort of in your face. And then I might just go back in with that buff titanium to make it look a little bit more of like a yellowy colour right at the top. Remembering to constantly flick out your lines right at the top so that fur looks really wispy. So I'm going to go back in with the warm grey one just to do the same thing again. Sort of wispy, longer, overlapping tufts of fur coming out at the top of the head where the base of those ears are. And then I'm going to go in with the Van Dyke Brown just to correct the shape of the sort of edge of the ginger fur. And you can also do some elongated hairs going back into that white fur so everything's now sort of really nicely merged together.
So I'm just going to bring this gingery section down a little bit and kind of tell by using the bottom of the iris as a guide for how low you can go with it. Kind of comes up to the top of that highlight in the eye, so I'm just going to bring it down up to that point. Also just going to go in with a slightly darker brown, the Burnt Umber. And then an even darker brown still, the Dark Sepia. So you can do these like really fine dark hairs within the white fur, especially at this darkest point here in the middle. And then the last thing to do is just to go back in with the craft knife slice tool and pull out those highlights and just add in those extra little bits of sort of lighter detail. Now obviously most of it will be quite subtle because the colours that we've used have been quite pale. But it's just like an extra tiny little bit of detail that you might want to add. back in with the Van Dyke brown just to make the edge of that gingery fur a little bit more full and then I think we're pretty much done so I'm gonna leave that there for part two we've got quite a lot done there um, and like I said in part three we're gonna be doing the nose and filling in that snout area just to finish off the rest of the face before making a start on the ears and those paws so I hope you've enjoyed um, part two of this tutorial. If you want access to more tutorials, all animal colour pencil based ones, then head over to my Patreon. The link is in the description below. I've got almost two years worth of tutorials on there, all of wildlife, pets, every single technique you could possibly imagine, everything's on there. So check that out if you're interested in more tutorials. Um, like I said at the start, the reference photo and the full materials list is also in the video description below, so you can follow through um, throughout the tutorial. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial by commenting below and giving it a like if you enjoyed it and please subscribe to my channel to see more. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be back shortly with part three.